Greetings and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Course Scenario and Lab Setup. For starters, let's talk about the value of scenario based training. Immersing yourself in a scenario that ports directly to real world environments with all of the challenges and the different problems that may come into play, this will enhance your learning experience. Being able to go beyond head knowledge and see where it applies to a company, that's where that knowledge that's in your mind, it blossoms into understanding. This is what's going to help you go from studying exchange to being a true exchange administrator. Scenario-based training is something that's used in education for every field that has a measure of intensity attached. So for example, law students, they'll often use mock trials in order to hone their skills. Military personnel, police, firefighters, these often perform drills and exercises to prepare for real-world circumstances. Now it's true, in all of those cases, there's some type of verbal or physical interaction that's involved in order to really bring the scenario to life. In our case, the scenario itself is going to be pulled into the video lessons you're about to watch. However, at the same time, you have the ability on your end to set up a lab environment and follow along as if we're truly working together. It's that lab time that you need in order to get that hands-on experience so that you can walk into any environment and be prepared to literally and physically do the work of an exchange administrator. So the scenario for this video series is an exchange design and deployment firm. The company's name is Exchange Exchange and ultimately companies come in and they ask for their problems to be resolved. So you never know what type of problem we're going to be dealing with. The company has multiple locations, one main headquarters in Orlando and a branch office in Miami. There are a total of 25 employees and as far as company history, the company began as a small two-person shop in Orlando back in 1998 in the days of Exchange 55. They've grown over time and they recently acquired another 10-person design firm in Miami. That was called Exclusively Exchange. They merged the firms together under the parent firm's company name, so Exchange Exchange is the company name going forward. The goal of the company is to assist with both core and advanced exchange design and deployment scenarios with a heavy focus on Exchange 2013 as the newcomer to the exchange world. All right, so are you starting to see how having this scenario, this background story interwoven through the lessons, how helpful this can be when we start talking about core and advanced exchange design and deployment scenarios, being that we have to look at it from so many different angles in order to focus on exam content. By doing it this way, we have the ability to pretty much turn on a dime and any new person that walks in the door of Exchange Exchange might have a different problem with a different solution that we need to come up with. Taking it one step further, if you want to look at it from the perspective of how this is going to be narrated and the roles that we're going to play, I'm going to play myself. I'm J. Peter Brzezzi. I'm an IT admin, an expert with IIS, DNS, and Active Directory. In addition, I'm an Exchange Link and SharePoint deployment and configuration expert. You, you're a new hire that was responsible in your previous position for the Exchange messaging environment in a fairly large enterprise. You're an experienced senior administrator with several years of experience administering, deploying, managing, monitoring, upgrading, migrating, and designing Exchange Server. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, I'm none of those things. Perhaps you've never even worked with Exchange before in a live environment. Well, here's the thing. According to the Microsoft Certification Prerequisites, these are the experience levels that they're looking for before a person goes and takes that exam. So it's not necessarily that you truly have to be experienced in all of these different avenues and aspects of Exchange. However, it's good to note that according to the Microsoft Certification Exams, this is what they're hoping for. They're hoping that you have had experience really going back over a number of years that helps you when it comes to preparing for and passing the certification exams. In all honesty, a video series can help you to prepare. It can help you to learn so many different topics, but the one thing it can never do is give you experience. I can give you my experiences, but only to a certain degree. 
So it's really essential that you study well and hopefully get yourself in a situation where you can obtain some of the experience that Microsoft is looking for you to have before you take the Microsoft certification exams. That does not mean, however, that you are not capable of taking and passing the certification exams even if you have low or no experience. With the right amount of training, preparation, lab work, and so forth, you would be able to go in, take the certification exams, and pass them. However, we're hoping at this stage in the game that you do have some experience and that you do have some understanding of Exchange, especially Exchange 2013, because this video series is going to move fast. There are a lot of different subjects to cover, and so any amount of experience that you do have is going to help when it comes to helping you to grasp the concepts and helping you to keep up with this fast-paced course. Now, I keep mentioning that it would be good for you to follow along and participate in setting up your own lab. Well, let me tell you what I'm personally using in this course, and that may help you in terms of what you might do. So I'm personally using a Dell T110 PowerEdge server. It's a quad-core with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It is really quiet, and that's really nice with the new Dell T servers that they've made them ultra-quiet. I'm running Server 2008 R2 with Hyper-V as the parent system. I have multiple child VMs running, either Server 2008 R2, as in the case of my domain controllers, or Server 2012, as in the case of my member servers that are running Exchange. So I recommend that you set up a similar environment. If you cannot get a Dell server with Hyper-V and run multiple VMs, perhaps you can set up a Type 2 hypervisor, whether it's VMware Workstation or something else, and try to run either one or two systems off of, let's say, a computer that has enough memory, 8 gigs of RAM if you have that on your desktops, or you might have to spread it out across a couple of different desktops. But ultimately, it would be good if you could set up at least two servers, maybe even three. Now, being able to follow along through the course, it's not necessary. We show you what we need to show you through the video lessons, but it is recommended because, again, it comes down to experience. Clicking the checkboxes yourself, clicking through wizards, setting things up, being able to even break things and fix them, or start over again if you need to, all of that is essential in terms of building your experience levels. Just to give you a quick view of the network infrastructure that we're designing out for Exchange Exchange, you can see the domain here, and we're going to pretty much set up, in this case, multiple servers, a domain controller as DC1. We're going to have a client access server that's separate from the mailbox server, and that's going to make it easier for us to demonstrate and work with high availability at some point in the course. We'll have a second mailbox server. We don't have to set that up to start with. We can set that up a little bit later on when we're concerned about demonstrating high availability. And you can see in my case, I have everything connected up to a router, which is then connected out to the internet. At the same time, you may want to set up a client system, which allows you then to determine if the various configuration settings that you make for your end users are actually working out. Sometimes you want to see that the setting you've configured is actually working on your end user's Outlook 2013 client. And it is good to use the latest client when you're working with Exchange 2013, just for the sake of being able to see all of the features that are promised in the marketing brochure, so to speak. So without the latest client, sometimes you're not able to see some of the features that have been built into Exchange 2013. All right, and so that's pretty much it as far as the course scenario and the lab setup. In the past, we used to give a lot more information as far as how to set up your lab, right down to the IP address of each and every server. But at this stage in the game, you should be capable of setting up your own lab environment. If you plan on going in and taking this certification anytime soon, you need to be able to set up your own servers, install your own operating systems, configure them, configure DNS to work properly, be able to configure Exchange Server and install it and work with it. And so ultimately, if you have those skills, then you're ready to move forward. If you don't, if at this point you feel very lost in the process, then my recommendation is that you take a step back and you determine where you're lacking. So is it a confusion with regard to setting up domain controllers? Do you need more instruction on Active Directory, DNS, and so forth? Then I recommend that you look at the train signal materials that will help you when it comes to that subject matter. If you have no experience with Exchange 2013, 
that's okay. Then I recommend that you take a look at the Exchange 2013 Administration course, which really takes you from the beginning and walks you through the entire process, installation, configuration, and so forth. So look, if you're not quite ready to move forward, that's okay. Go take a look at those other materials, get yourself up to speed, make sure you feel comfortable before we move ahead into some really advanced subject matter. The certification exam subject matter is not lightweight. It is very deep at times. So make sure you're really ready for this before pushing forward. And if you are ready, then hopefully you feel excited about moving forward. I know I do. Okay, so let's get started.